Okay. Back and out. <laughs> How's it going? This is Big Anklevich. Welcome to Big Anklevich in Houston. Um, you know, I feel bad because it's been a long time since I last did an ankle cast. I feel like a douche uh, again. Um, it's been since what? I think it was May the last time that I did anything. And I've been here and you know, I, I can use it as an excuse and say, hey, I've been here and there's been a lot going on and so I haven't been able to do it, but I just, I, I don't know, I suck. We'll just put it that way. Consistency is like the most important thing in, I don't know, everything in life, it seems. And I can't do anything consistently, except for, I guess, maybe things that are bad for me. But then, I mean, I can't even do like Dr. Dre said to do and smoke weed every day. Uh, Although I don't think that was actually Dre himself speaking there. I don't know which of the many, many guest stars on that song who had to say that. But anyway, uh, so I got here and I was going to do a video about what it was like here. But then a hurricane came. And so instead, I did a video about my experience in the hurricane. And then I sat on it. I did, I sat on it for like two months. Um, has it been two months? Let's hope it hasn't actually been two months. But anyways, I sat on this thing and I, I haven't put it out yet. So here we are, uh, it's October and the hurricane was in August. Um, but here is my story about what it was like to, uh, to live through Hurricane Harvey and uh, spoiler alert, it's not really that interesting. <laughs> Sorry. Um, hopefully uh, you still get some joy out of it, if that can be possible. Um, but yeah, uh, I just thought I'd do this quick intro to uh, say sorry about being so late. I mean, it's been so long that there's been uh, Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Maria and now Hurricane Nate, and there was like a huge earthquake, and the, I don't know, the whole of the Western United States burned down, I think, too. So, uh, it's really old news, but hopefully you don't tune in for the most up-to-date stuff that's going on, because if you do that with the Dune Steve, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Uh, anyways, uh, so on to the, uh, the, the, the ramble. This is me driving to work on my very first day, uh, that I was finally able to get to work, uh, after the hurricane ended. So, uh, enjoy, and thanks for listening. Welcome to another episode of the Ankle Cast. Today it is the Survivor's Guilt edition of the Ankle Cast. Uh, so I'm leaving the uh, convenience store that's down the street from my house. Um, you can see, well maybe you can't see, but if you can see, it's pretty crowded with cars, except over there where the gas pumps are, that's not crowded with cars because there's no gas. I see one of those big dump truck, high profile vehicles that they use to rescue people over there. And uh, there's a bunch of dudes in the back of it, all wearing like hip waiter boots and all the, the crazy stuff. Um, so yeah, I... <laughs> It's been a while since I've done an ankle cast, and I feel bad because I meant to do one where it's like, hey, now I'm in Houston. What is Houston like? Houston's like this. And I was going to do, oh my gosh, what was that? 
oh, there was a big piece of big piece of a tree just fell out and landed in the water as I was watching. And I thought, what the heck? I thought maybe a bird had just fallen from the sky. Um, sorry. Uh, anyway, so what was I saying before that thing distracted me? Um, oh yeah, I was going to do just like a, this is what Houston is like and I've been living here for a little while and this is neat and this is awful and this is cool and this is not and you know that kind of stuff and I've got a bunch of material for it but uh oh do I want to turn here damn it forgot to turn on my directions Google save me where am I going all right so Google's gonna lead me because it's gonna be a crazy drive um it said it was going to be an hour and 38 minutes to get there. And uh, that's a long drive. <laughs> uh, normally it's about 45 minutes, so hour and 45, uh, that's a little extended. Hopefully, oh, the canal there doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too overflowed over filled maybe maybe that's the word i want um anyways after the second distraction um i was going to uh, do that podcast about uh you know what houston was like have material for it i've done some video for it and stuff like that really all i needed to do was just do it do the the podcast um but you know me i'm the worst uh so i hadn't done it yet and now here we are hurricane hits and i feel like this podcast therefore needs to jump the queue right to the front uh i think it needs to be the first you know i need to um let you guys know what it was like. Um, it's one of those things that is a big deal uh, nationwide, possibly worldwide. I don't know how much uh, people, uh, I don't know, in like Sri Lanka are giving a crap. They're like, what are you talking about? We get rainy seasons like that every week. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty big deal. I don't know if it's this bad, but... In my mind, it's basically the Katrina of this decade. It's been 12 years since Hurricane Katrina happened. And, um, you know, that, that was uh, a big, fat, hairy deal. And, um, you know, this one seems like it might be pretty similar in scope. Now, I was far, far away from the action when Hurricane Katrina happened. I was working in the news, which I suppose is a little different than what I did this time around, because though I was working in the news, I didn't know working. But uh, I was in the news, so I saw all the things that happened at Katrina. I saw the just the terrible things that people had to suffer through um, but uh, I was nowhere near it I wasn't a part of it uh, so it's a pretty weird to suddenly now be a part of it you know now I've, I've I moved right into the freaking midst of it right uh, right before it happened too it was kind of a bummer uh, like we have a camping stove and we've always had propane for it and you know we're fine for any kind of an emergency like this but because we had to move um, I'm pretty sure that we threw our propane out because I don't think we were allowed to pack it in our truck you weren't allowed to put some kind of combustible thing into the moving van and so we had to leave it behind 
I think. Maybe maybe we brought it and it's just in a box somewhere in the garage. I don't know. Uh, there is still a lot of that. But, but uh, yeah, we, so we didn't have fuel for our camping stove, which normally we would have, and normally we would be prepared. But the fact that we just moved into our house a month and a half ago left us very unprepared uh, for what came our way. Um, so let me, uh, I guess I can tell the story. I'll start from uh, the beginning. Uh, we found out that Harvey was headed our way uh, probably like Wednesday of last week. Something like that. It started, they were saying, oh, this is going to come together. It's going to form a hurricane. Because I think it was a tropical storm or something like that. And it kind of hit the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico and kind of came apart. But then it went through and went on into the Gulf of Mexico and came back together. And they said, this is going to turn into a hurricane. And I thought, oh, okay. And they started talking about, you know, getting ready. They said, you know, now's the time to prepare. They, the newsroom would send out emails saying, be sure you get all your stuff ready so that you're able to come and help when, uh, when the time comes. And so we, uh, we went out, my wife went out and bought a bunch of, uh, you know, it's the, the kind of things that you could make when you don't have... Uh, power and stuff like that, you know, just kind of, and, oh shoot, that's a long bit of traffic, hopefully that's, oh, it looks like somebody's car is uh, shut down up here. The kind of food that, uh, you know, you, you don't need a refrigerator to keep, basically is what she got. So there was a lot of, um, what, what what all did she get? I don't even remember what she got. Some of the stuff, unfortunately, she got, and she didn't really think about how she would cook it. I think she expected the camp stove to work, but she didn't think to grab propane for the camp stove because she figured we have it because we've always had it, right? But we don't have it. And uh, I wonder if you guys can see me. I'm looking at the camera, and it looks like the lens is all fogged over. That's not cool. Huh. Well, I put it in the waterproof uh, thing just in case <laughs> I needed to get out with it and use it outside or anything like that. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe this will be all for naught. Hopefully not. Um... Anyway, uh, so we have all that food, including things like Oreos and, you know, the kind of things that will make you happy while everything is miserable. Uh, my son, the five-year-old, got really excited about it, and he kept praying for the power to go out so that he could get into the treats. And we kept saying, eh, why don't you just hope? that the power doesn't go out and then we can just eat this stuff when it's all over. Um, because, uh, yeah, that would be bad. But, um, so we had that stuff prepared. I went and bought some of my own stuff because I was probably going to be stuck at work. Um, they had plans made for people to be there. It was going to be uh, 12, you know, we were going to be going wall-to-wall -wall coverage, you know, just non-stop. Uh, they had plans for people working 12 hours on, 12 hours off was uh, the way it was going to go. And I was set to start on Sunday. The hurricane actually hit on Friday, and I was at work on Friday. And I was... Uh, And there for the the ground fall in um, Corpus Christi, I guess it was Rockport where it actually hit, uh, straight up hit, but it was the Corpus Christi area, we'll say. 
and um, that was kind of crazy. You know, we had reporters right in the middle of it, and I, I don't know, I, I don't understand that. I'm, I work in news, but I'm not one of those newsy people. There are certain people that just live for that stuff. Uh, I've known several of them that, oh man, any time they pass a new law or any time that they do anything, the directions tell me to go straight. I thought they wanted me to turn here, but I guess not. Um, yeah, th there are people that, you know, you pass a new law and they're like, oh my gosh, can't wait. Uh, and they're off, you know. Quarter mile, turn right onto East Tex Freeway Service Road. They're off uh, covering the craziness, uh, whatever it is. And often it's not craziness, it's boringness. But they're just like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't wait to go and watch the legislative session. Um, turn right onto East Tex Freeway Service Road. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's... It's not my cup of tea. I can't understand why someone would go in to the friggin' eye of the hurricane, put their freaking life on the line for something like that. Oh, is everybody turning here? Okay. Uh, but yeah, lots of people go in. They put their, their they'll put their life on the line just to cover a news story, and I really don't understand how someone's that way. We have a reporter who was at Rockport in the eye of the hurricane, and he said, "Oh, this is my 29th storm. I'm I'm all ready for it." And he volunteered to be there. He was so he was all excited, and. And as the hurricane was coming aground, he was out in it. He would, he would go outside and his photographer would go outside and they would... And they would take shots of him out there and he's just out there struggling and the wind's knocking him. Geez, shut up. I understand. I heard you all five times. What's wrong with you, Google? Um... But yeah, he's out there fighting the wind and being thrown all over the place and just trying to stay up. And I, I, I don't, A, I don't understand why. Okay, shut up. I don't understand why someone would do that in the first place. But secondly, I don't understand why you would need that. Like, what does that serve anyone you know like why is seeing somebody get beaten up by the wind uh help how does that help how do, do we like look at that and then think oh okay that's uh now i i understand what's going on we all know what's going on it's not like that there's anything new to it it's happened thousands of times. Why do we need somebody to be standing out there and get beat up by it just to show? I don't get that. Um, anyway, it is. Uh, it was interesting to see. The one thing that I did think that was crazy is the guy was there and he was getting tossed around like a rag doll in the storm. And then he finished his live shot and he went back into his hotel, which was a hotel that was built to withstand a Category 5 hurricane. But let me tell you, this one was Category 4, and it didn't make it through. Anyways, that's, that's uh, jumping ahead in the story. Let me go back. He went into his hotel, and then he uh, got back uh, out there a half an hour later. And at this point now, the eye of the storm was right over them and it was super calm and he was just standing there leaning on the railing and i just thought what 
That is so weird. So weird that you could do that. Um, you know, I've heard of Aya Storm, and you see it in, like, cartoons and things like that where they uh, portray it, but... No, I don't do that. Um, sorry, looking at my directions. This isn't my usual route to work. I'm going a totally different way, so i got to be uh, paying attention, I guess. I'm going to get over to the left lane. Um, but yeah, it was really weird to actually see the eye of the hurricane, you know, that he just walked out and was just standing there, and that was what it was uh, at. And then a little later, it was going to come over uh, the rest of the way. The crazy thing was, though, after he did his report from the eye of the storm he called us and said hey somebody just came in and said that the uh the hotel has taken damage and we have to be evacuated we got to get out of here and so uh this uh hotel that was built to withstand a category five hurricane um didn't make it through the category four So, they, um, they had to run. I mean, I don't know how you, how you get out in the middle of a hurricane, you know? I know that, like, their satellite dish had, like, partially come off, and they were trying to get that thing secured so that it wouldn't, uh, hurt anybody, it wouldn't come off and, uh, go flying out in the storm and embed itself in somebody's brain. Continue on East Texas Freeway Service Road for a half mile. But, uh, but yeah, they, uh, they evacuated on out of there. I think the guy's okay from what I know. But, um, hopefully, hopefully everything is okay. I, I haven't been at work. Because, uh, yeah, after the show on Friday night, I was told I was safe to go home, and I was surprised. I, I, I kept thinking, are you sure you guys don't want me to be here? If we're going to be doing wall-to-wall um, -wall coverage? And they're like, ah, I think we won't start the wall-to-wall -wall until uh, Sunday. So I went home. So I went home, and I had Saturday off. So I went home wasn't too bad it was raining but it wasn't a uh, hurricane by us that was still all the way down to corpus christi so i got home just fine and uh overnight it rained a lot and then the next day it wasn't even too bad it was still sprinkling mostly but it wasn't that bad we even went out to like walmart and got a couple more things tried to find some uh, propane for that stove, which we didn't find, um, but, you know, we went out and, and looked for, for some food, we got some, some different stuff, we got Oreos, because, uh, my son wanted to eat the standby Oreos so bad that we figured, okay, let's get some that he can eat now, so we'll stop wanting the standby one so bad that he gets into him before it's uh, okay to do so. But, um, yeah, I was home all day Saturday and it wasn't that bad because when the storm came aground, it headed towards San Antonio instead. Before it flipped to Yui came back around and headed past Houston. I've never seen a storm do something like that. That seems so weird that it went up one way and then just kind of looped around and came back and went back the other way. And it looped around again later too and went back out to, to sea even and then came back in again. Weirdest uh, storm I've ever seen, but maybe that's 
just normal for weather guys just know that that happens all the time because I'm just not a weather guy um anyways uh on Saturday night right before I was supposed to head into work Sunday morning the rain really picked up and everything started flooding and we got flood alerts all night long and it was hard to sleep because your phone kept going ah, ah. <coughs> <clears throat> I won't make that sound again um, it was uh, it was crazy and once that happened everything was flooded and I woke up in the morning and I looked at my phone and I tried to find a way to get to work and yeah it just everything was flooded the um, the roads heading in were were flooded completely and I I checked uh, I ch texted my boss to find out what he thought I should do and he said man I think everything's pretty much closed down you probably ought to just stay put so I did I sat around at home all day long on Sunday and uh, Again, I, I think I said at the start that this is the survivor's guilt edition of the ankle cast because, yeah, I, we didn't have any problems. Uh, and I, <laughs> I didn't even have to struggle into work like the people that I work with. I, I mean, I should have, but I was told that I, I shouldn't go in. And so I never had to fight that. I didn't have to deal with anything. I just sat at home. Our power, uh, the worst we got was our power went out for like an hour and then it came back. So, you know, that was not a big deal. We never had any real problems. We didn't flood, never even came close to flooding. Uh, and I'm sure lots and lots of people got to get through the hurricane in that fashion but lots and lots of people did not get through the hurricane in that fashion they were struggling they were out of power for days and days their house flooded they had to bring their family out in a rowboat or on a freaking their people like blow up an air mattress and bring them out on that and I watched all that stuff on TV and was just overwhelmed and guilty. The survivor's guilt thing is real. I felt, I felt bad. I felt like I, I, I should be dealing with that too, but I'm not. I'm, I'm next door to the guy who is instead, you know? It was just... It was just... I felt bad. I mean, all I did was sit around. I watched TV. Um, when we got had it up to here with the news, I would watch other stuff. I watched uh, several hours of uh, Iron Fist. I haven't seen that yet. And I figured I probably ought to just because uh, Defenders is out. And I'd like to uh, see it before I watch Defenders. Um, oh shoot, did I miss where I was supposed to turn? I think I might have. Hopefully I didn't screw myself up. The last thing I need is to be led down the wrong path. Okay, I gotta make sure I don't miss this road up here. I'm gonna have to turn left. I was turning right before, so I definitely missed what I was supposed to turn on. Oops! I was so racked with survival's, survivor's guilt that I wasn't paying attention to my directions. But yeah, I just, I, I, 
I sat around and watched TV for days. Um, we didn't have problems. We didn't get flooded. We didn't lose power. You know, our refrigerator has worked the whole time for our food. Oh, flash flood warning in this area. Great. <laughs> am, I, <laughs> am I doing something dumb here? Probably. Uh, Turn left onto Texas 242 West. Um, anyways, so, uh, yeah, I just, I just felt bad just sitting there. The next day, uh, I woke up, it had rain, it had been raining just crazy, nonstop, pretty much the entire time. Turn left onto Texas 242 West. Um... It was it was a non-stop raining uh, thing, and up until I think Monday, it was mostly on the west side of Houston. It wasn't something that I had to deal with even in the least, and no, neither did anyone else around me. But things got so bad all over the place that they had to start doing some emergency measures, and some of those emergency measures were opening, uh, letting water out of some of the dams that, uh, had res that were holding, uh, you know, reservoirs in, um, cause there was so much rain, these reservoirs were filling, and if they didn't start letting water out, the dams were going to break, and if all the water came out of the reservoirs, then that would be catastrophic, as opposed to just really bad. So they had to start opening up several dams and letting water out. Which, you know, you got to think, oh, in a time like this, what could be worse? Well, the dam breaking, what could be worse? But anyways, um, yeah, they started letting water out. Uh, most of the reservoirs that they were letting water out of were also off to the west. But they did uh, let water out of the reservoir in Conroe which is closer to me on the east side. Mile. Turn left onto Old Houston Road. And when that happened, uh, things got bad in my neighborhood. The river rose fast and um, it got ugly uh, pretty quick. Luckily, still, Turn left onto Old Houston Road. we're on the... Um, the high side of town, I guess. I don't know. The we were our our place is on a slight hill compared to uh, other parts of town. We weren't down by the river. I moved out of that van a little while ago. Um, but a lot of other people were down by the river, and all of a sudden they were flooding. And on Monday morning. Um, the highway that I take into work was totally flooded. So my boss again said, nah, you don't have to come in. If you can't make it, I, you know, do what's best for you. So I decided I wouldn't come. And um, that's the day when my neighborhood became the, uh, the center of the news coverage. All of a sudden, everything was all about my neighborhood and they were rescuing people and evacuating people and flying the mountain helicopters. I'm back. Sorry about that. I just got a call from my wife. I had to cut out for a second. It's too bad too, because the big excitement of my drive so far happened while I was on the phone with her. I had to uh, drive through an area where the water was flowing across the road. Uh, luckily it was nice and low and I saw a guy ahead of me make it through just fine. So. I followed him and didn't worry too much that I was going to be sunk. I do, I am driving our Durango, so we've got some, uh, I've got some good clearance for between me and the road. So I can make it through uh, some puddles. I'm just, I'm not willing to risk it very much to tell you the truth, so. 
if, uh, if things get worse than that, I think I would just turn around and go the other way. But um, for now, I'm going to keep on keeping on. I'm in places of Houston I've never been. I have no idea where I am. Oh, there's a sign that says high water here. I assume that that... Um, it looked like a permanent sign, though. I don't think that was just added. Uh, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't mean anything. Turn left onto Farm to Market Road 1314 South. Oh! Does mean something. Okay, here we go through some water. Ay, ay, ay. I'm gonna take it slow. I can see the line down the middle of the road, so I'm gonna use that to guide me. Uh, you better back off, buddy. Do not come in until I'm out, dummy. Okay. <laughs> Ugh, I gotta get out of here. What am I doing? This place is worse. Google's leading me through crazy stuff. Google, curse you. Turn left onto Farm to Market Road 1314 South. Yes, please. Whew. Uh, okay. Oh, this is. This is just go when you can. Okay. Got a light, but it's just a stop sign light. All right, I'm back onto a more sizable road. That makes me feel good. Huh. Okay, so I have no idea where I was in my whole story. I think I was at Monday. Um, it looked a little bad for trying to get into work again, so I didn't try it. Uh, and then, yeah, again, I was sitting around the house doing a lot of nothing, and somewhere in the uh, middle of the afternoon, heading towards evening, you started hearing our neighborhood uh, mentioned on the news all the time. And uh, places were starting to flood out there. Now, on Monday, we decided to venture out and uh, see what we could see a little bit. Um, so in the morning, we went down where the HEB grocery store is. Uh, and that whole parking lot was underwater. Uh, it looked pretty bad. Um, we pulled in for a second because it looked like it was still open, like the parking lot was full, but maybe the building wasn't. There was a bunch of cars there that were parked there and stuff. So we thought maybe you could still go into the grocery store, but I pulled in and it just looked terrible. So I said, no, nah, we're, we're gonna go, we're gonna go try Kroger instead. Let's get out of here. So we uh, got off of the road and um, headed to Kroger instead. Kroger is more up the hill and closer to our house. So it wasn't flooding there. And uh, it was it was all good. So we went and parked there. It was open, and uh, we got out and went to go shopping. And they had a line that you had to wait in to get into the grocery store. There was a guy there, and he's like, "Okay, line starts right here." And um, we got into the line, and the guy was like, "If you want carts." Uh, they're out in the parking lot. You gotta go get one. So I went out and got, while we were waiting in line to go in, I just went out and got a bunch. Got a bunch of carts and brought them back in case anybody else wanted them. I only got, like, I think I only got like four or five because I wasn't, uh, I don't have one of those straps that you have when you're the, um, the grocery store guy. Ah, uh, 
shoot. The ramp is closed, Google. Merge onto Texas 99. The ramp is closed, Google. But only on my side. Turn right onto the ramp to Texas 99. I'm gonna. If they're going on, then... I should be able to, right? I hope I'm not going to get in trouble for this. I'm going on to a... I'm going on to a toll road. From what I understand, the toll roads are all shut down. You can use whatever road you can. But... I've never been on a toll road here. Because the road that I need to get to work is not a toll road. But that's when it's not underwater. So, so here I am, driving the toll road without a pass. So anyways, we, are, we were waiting in line at the grocery store to get in. Um, we, uh, we got in there and uh, it was it wasn't as bad as I thought it might be, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't know, on movies you see like when something's coming and then like just everything, the entire store has just been like emptied, you know? Every last bag of pork rinds and, and uh, every can of Clabber Girl, you know, just everything has been somehow pulled off of the store shelves. It wasn't like that, but... Certain things were completely gone, like um, uh, bread that was empty, totally gone. Because I guess, you know, you can make a sandwich with bread. Well, another flood warning. Um, you know, you can make a sandwich with bread and peanut butter or whatever, even if you don't have a fridge. So everybody buys the heck out of the bread. So the bread was totally gone. Uh, what we were there for was milk. We had bread, because we'd bought it ahead of time. But what we didn't have, oh my gosh. I don't know if you can see off to the side. I think you probably can't, because my lens fogged up. But there is a lot of water out there. Holy crap. Oh man, I'm going over a bridge that I swear is barely, barely clearing the water. Going over the San Jacinto River here. And the San Jacinto River looks more like the San Jacinto Lake. It is wide. Trees look like they're feet underwater. Wow, look at that, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, we were hoping to get eggs because we, uh, we had a bunch of eggs, but our fridge was turned up too high and all the eggs froze in the fridge on us. I don't know if that happens to you very often, but I swear it happens to us way too often. It's super frustrating. The fridge is either too cold or too warm, but it can never be just right. And it's also like too warm in some spots and then too cold in others. So if, uh, you know, up at the back at the top, it gets really cold, but down at the bottom, it's not. And so stuff gets ruined by being too warm at the bottom and it gets ruined by being too cold at the top. So anyways, all of our eggs froze and they cracked when they froze and then they like spilled all over in the fridge. It was just a pretty big disaster of egg proportions. Um, so we were hoping to get eggs for some reason and this, this will show you just how survivor's guilt, how much survivor's guilt I should feel we wanted to go out and have a nice breakfast. 
My wife wanted French toast, but we didn't have eggs. So we're just like, mm, I'm going to go to the store and get me some eggs for my French toast. <laughs> that's what it was like. I mean, that's, that's the uh, horrible depravity that we were put through. There were no eggs for our French toast. Oh, so uncivilized. We had a regular toast. Um, anyways, there were no eggs. There was no bread. Meat was mostly gone too. Uh, we were able to get some bacon though, so we did, did get to have a sort of a good uh, breakfast. Uh, there was bacon and I also got some sausages. Uh, and we got a bunch of other stuff that could be useful in, uh, in this uh, kind of emergency times. We got up to the front and you would not believe the lines. The lines to check out were long. Um, but actually I got lucky and found one that people seemed to not see. You know how like at the edges the lines come out and then they go out that way? So people coming around the edges see the lines and they just assume that they're that long everywhere. But if they push their way to the middle, it turns out that they could have gotten in a much shorter line. Well, I came down the middle and so I just came up and I was just like, is this the line? It's just this one? And so I got in and I was in a short line, but it didn't really help because we got to the front, they started beeping our groceries through and just as they were just about done, all that was left were our two gallons of milk and then power dropped out. It only dropped for a second. It just dipped out and then came right back up, but it was out long enough to shut their computers down on their registers. Take the edge to Grand Parkway. So, the, um, when the power goes out on these guys' registers, it takes 10 minutes for it to come back up. So we just uh, settled back and waited for him to come back up. And about five minutes later, the power dropped out again. And, <laughs> and so they had to start again from scratch. So they started going again. And then three minutes later, the power dropped out again. So they had to start again from scratch. And then a few minutes later, it dropped again. And oh my gosh, at this point, I was starting to wonder if we were ever gonna be able to get our groceries, if they would like let us pay with cash or I don't know, if they had calculators they could add it up with. Anyways, the power even dropped out completely for a minute like dropped all the way out and it was dark and what didn't come right back up and we went oh no darn now we're really in trouble we're not going to get to buy anything but then the, it came back on and uh and eventually the power stopped dropping out long enough to get the register started back up so the registers were started back up. Grand Parkway. Is this it? I guess this is it. Uh, and we were finally able to buy our groceries and get out of there. Uh, sadly, for us, this was the one time that our power went out as well at home. So we got home. Grand Parkway, then use the left two lanes to turn left onto North Freeway Service Road. What? Going left here. Use the left two lanes to turn left onto North Freeway Service Road. Getting into North Freeway Service Road. 
on North Freeway Service Road for two miles. So yeah, we got home with all these groceries that we'd bought, like bacon and sausage and stuff like that for fancy hurricane breakfast. And the power was out, so we couldn't cook any of it. We just sat there thinking, oh geez, what are we gonna do with this stuff? And we put it into the, the fridge, hoping that, you know, at least it would last a little bit longer that way. But the power didn't seem to be coming back. And we didn't know if it would come back. We were a little worried about that. And so we sat there and then all of a sudden, beep, 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 beep. All the little uh, bells started ringing on our appliances when they came back on. And we thought, oh, quick, cook this stuff while we can. And so we jumped up and everybody pitched in and we cooked our breakfast as fast as we could. We cooked the sausages, we cooked the bacon cook the bacon in like the oven, cook the sausages on the frying pan. We uh, also thought ahead and thought maybe we better, uh... was I supposed to get on the freeway there? I guess not. It's telling me that the freeway's closed there, but it doesn't look closed to me. It's all right. We'll go around. Um, yeah, we uh, thought ahead and thought maybe we better uh, boil some pasta and stuff like that because we don't have propane for our cooking stove, our camping stove. And so we uh, cooked some extra stuff beyond just the, the breakfast food. But we had ourselves a nice breakfast on Monday. That was nice. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of an adventure to try and go out and go shopping. Uh, but I found it, I don't know if other, I mean, I guess it all depends on how bad things are for you. Uh, if your life is threatened, then going shopping is not gonna be a bit of an adventure. It's gonna be awful. Um, it's gonna be frustrating when those registers keep going out and you haven't eaten for, you know, two days or something. But for me, who was just wrapped in survivor's guilt, I mean, survivor's luck at the time, I guess, I did have the guilt, but the that wasn't what was saving me. That was just what I felt. And somehow I was uh, I was getting through with with luck and so these things were able to be adventures it was, it, it was okay to be fun it didn't have to be awful and I, I think I think some people don't see it that way there are certain people that just expect everything to be easy and they get into a huff um, the drop of a hat but then for other people what is that guy doing he's backing down the ramp did he get in an accident there's somebody's bumper there um anyways yeah i mean you can you can make it an adventure or you can make it awful it probably depends on how, oh, we got some traffic coming up here. Let me get over. But a lot of it is also just your attitude, you know what I mean? Like, do you want to have it be awful? Or would you rather have things be an adventure? I don't know, maybe it depends on how long it takes. Like if we'd been at that store for like five hours, uh, then it wouldn't be an adventure anymore. That happened to us a couple weeks ago. We had to go get a car for my wife because um, our old car died on us. And so we had to replace her car. And the process of buying the car was the most frustrating thing ever. It took us seven hours to get out of that place. And then they asked me to do a bunch of stuff Monday morning after we'd bought the car, so it took another 
three or four hours on top of that. And man, in that case, I was frustrated. I was losing it. So I guess it depends on how, how bad it gets. You know. I don't know. But the, the store was just an adventure. But yeah, that day, that night, uh, things started getting worse uh, in my neighborhood. Started hearing our uh, neighborhood mentioned in the uh, press conferences and stuff like that. And I think it was because they started releasing water out of the Lake Conroe Reservoir and that water came down the San Jacinto River and started flooding out some of the areas uh, just to the south of us. And uh, the next morning, oh man, it was really bad. And I talked to somebody else who worked with me found a faster route via I-45 South, which saves three minutes. Uh, if you prefer to stay on the current route, tap no thanks. Just no thanks. You're too late, man. There's no way out of here. Oh, wow, look at that. That's a sign buried. Okay, I'm gonna grab this camera and point it over to the side of me. So if, you can, if you can see this stuff over there, that looks like a street to me, or I don't, I don't know what it's like here normally. You can see a house over there. I think the, this must be the river or something. Cypress Creek. The creek has gone over its boundaries, that's for sure. Um, here it is over here, still flooding, flowing. That's pretty crazy. Uh, all right, I'm gonna put the camera back. Hopefully you were able to see some of that. I can still see that the stupid lens is all totally uh, fogged over. This may be a, a useless podcast. I may look at this video and go, oh, there's no way I'm using that. That is crap. Or maybe it'll be just like one of those awesome little blurred effects that goes all the way around. Oh, geez, is this camera even on? I had to check that. According to the uh, light on the back, it's still rolling. Uh, uh, okay, so I made it to two Wednesday. To, to, to today Wednesday? It was Tuesday. I made it to Tuesday. On Tuesday, the um, things were getting really bad in my neighborhood. Uh, I talked to somebody that I worked with uh, that lives in the same neighborhood, and she said that it just all the freeways were shut down there was no way to get to work so I needed to just tell them that I couldn't make it and Google was making it look like at the very least it would be a really challenging thing to get to work um, so I didn't even try uh, what I did decide I mean I kept watching it on the news and seeing people that were in trouble and for the first time ever, and I, I suppose this shows how old I am, all this time I hadn't once thought to look for news on Twitter. But I thought, oh, I, I'll, I checked stuff on Twitter and I searched just for my neighborhood and there was all sorts of people saying, we're on a roof and we need help. Please come and rescue us. This is our address. And I thought, holy shit, I've, I've got a canoe in my garage. Maybe I can help someone and so pretty soon I dug my canoe which was all the way at the back of the garage I dug it out I got it onto my roof and I and I attached it there and, and me and my son jumped in the car and we drove out to uh, 
down by the HEB grocery store, which had been flooded. I guess it just kept getting worse there. We drove down that way, and uh, the, sto the, the road was closed. They had police turning everybody around, so we got there, and it said, hey, we've got this canoe. Is there somewhere that can can we help is there some how we can go in and and help somebody and the policeman there was just like oh i don't know uh i think they just closed down their operations over there but uh, if you drive up back this way maybe you can find uh somewhere that you can help And so we did, we drove back up and we were looking for somewhere. We saw some, some guys that were all towing boats and we thought, well, these guys look like they know what they're doing because they had real boats. They didn't just have canoes. They had like actual worthwhile boats with motors or fan boats or, you know, just two miles exit 61 toward Greens Road um so we followed these guys and they drove up and we wound up at the high school uh and talked to the policeman that was there I guess this was a place they were bringing people that were rescued and then loading them onto buses and sending them out to where shelters were the high school itself wasn't a shelter but there were churches nearby that were shelters and they were putting these people onto buses and sending them there as they came came in i guess and so they said well there's some guys over there and they're all got a boat staging area and uh maybe you can find out where to go with them and so we went over we talked to somebody who uh, seemed to be in contact with the people that you should be in contact with. I don't know. Anyways, they had nowhere for us to go. They said, hold on, just, just uh, we'll, we'll see if we can find something for you. And so we sat there for a while and finally I just thought, you know what, this is... Even if I did get there, they're not going to send some doofus in a canoe out. They're going to send these guys with the motorboats. And so I finally gave up and went back home. At least I tried, I guess, but I, I feel like I could have done something more useful somehow. But I just, I had visions of myself canoeing through, you know, roofs of houses coming across somebody that's stuck on their roof and being like, get in, come on, you know. Continue on North but road for two miles. even if we just helped one person, I would have felt great, but it wasn't to be. There was uh, many more competent people than me. And so, oh, shoot. I guess this goes straight. But, um, yeah. I didn't get to, uh, to do any of that kind of stuff, which is a bummer because I would have loved to have been able to help, but, you know, I, I, I tried. Tried to do something. Instead, all I did was waste some gas. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that is when things started to clear up a little bit, was, was uh, a little bit after that. For the first time in forever, it wasn't raining, like not even sprinkling, not even a little bit of rain. And I was kind of blown away. It had been so long. GPS signal lost. Oh, great. GPS signal lost. Thank you. Um, 
Did it just have me get off to then get back on? In 800 feet, keep right of the fork. Follow signs for Sam Houston Tollway. Keep right at the fork. Keep right at the fork. Okay, so I'm not getting back on to 45. Continue on Sam Houston Tollway for three quarters of a mile. Sam Houston? Am I turning? Continue for three quarters of a mile. What the hell are you doing to me here, Google? In 800 feet, use the left lane to take the I-45 south ramp. You are getting me back onto 45. I hear a police siren too. Uh-oh. Are they getting on to the freeway I'm getting on to? Use the left lane to take the I-45 south ramp, then merge onto I-45 south. Can't tell where that fire truck is going. They're going right past me. Dumb. I hope I hope I I missed a bunch of traffic there because Google just got me off of the freeway and then put me back on the same freeway. I hate when it does that. It does that fairly often, but one time I said, no, Google, I'm not getting off the freeway here. I don't care what you say. And I stayed on and then the second I got past the exit, it told me to stay on. I went around the corner and saw it just the world's worst traffic and I was stuck in it because I didn't listen. So, you know, could be bad. Sometimes Google's right, sometimes it's not. Anyway, um, yeah, the, the rain let up for the first time in many days. It wasn't actually raining on us, even a little bit because it was always raining at least a little bit for five days straight. Uh, pretty much from Saturday night all the way through Tuesday night. What does that make? Four days straight? And then it finally let up a little bit. And by the end of that evening, I looked outside and I was like, holy crap, our street is dry. Um, and yeah, now here I am the next morning trying to go into work uh, it's a long process I'm going through parts of town that I've never been through before uh, and for the most part it's been no big deal I did have to go through a couple of spots of deep water not deep water but water over the road anyways um, but uh, it's all been kind of like this for the most part. And that was my uh, experience with the hurricane, I guess. Um, I talked a lot about survivor's guilt, and yeah, I felt it. Seeing all those people on the, on the TV in just desperate straits, even people, you know, when it got to the point where it was my neighborhood, and they were rescuing people from houses just down the way from me, then I felt really guilty. Like, why is my house up, out of the water, power is still on, nothing's gone out, there's no problem for me, and all these people just down the road are being, you know, it's, it's like, a, I don't know, a guy who is in a plane crash and the person in the seat next to him dies but he comes out without even a broken bone or anything. And, you know, how do you account for it? Why did these people get shellacked and I didn't? Uh, and I don't know why. Uh, all I can say is that we got lucky. We picked the right house to move into. Uh, I was talking to my wife about it and saying there's a few houses that we had ahead of the house we finally wound up with on our list 
We tried to put an offer on other houses and didn't get it. Weren't able to uh, get that house. And um, why is it taking me back that way? Maybe that's just the way that this freeway goes. Oh, okay. I thought it was telling me I needed to turn. But anyway, sorry, damn, I get distracted so much on this drive. Maybe doing it while I'm driving is not the best idea, I don't know. Uh, but uh, the house that we almost, that we tried to move into there was nothing between it and the river. It was just some trees. It was right out there near the water. And I thought, gosh, that would be so cool to live somewhere like that. You can just go right out into the trail. You can go hiking around back in there. It'd be so much fun for a kid to grow up in a place like that. And we didn't get that house and I was pretty bummed. But I bet that house is underwater right now. I bet that it took a beating. So, I guess now I'm, I'm pretty happy with where we ended up. My wife likes our house a lot. I think this was her first choice. And so she's glad that we got it. Uh, so, I'm glad that we got it now too, because we were able to escape the worst of it never got bad where we were. We never needed the water to recede because it never seeded in the first place. Oh. <laughs> so that is uh, the Survivor's Guilt edition of the Ankle Cast. I doubt that you enjoyed it because I did a terrible job of relaying the story through all the distractions that have been going on and I'm really sorry. Um, I'm going to try and get it edited together. It'll probably be several days, though. Going into work, and most likely I won't be going home tonight. I'll probably be staying um, in the station tonight is my guess. But maybe tomorrow night I might go home. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like it may not be that bad if I can... Uh, if I can get a, a good route home. The problem is hour and a half to get to work. I'm gonna run out of gas pretty quick. So, and there's not a lot of gas to be had. So, uh, we'll see. But I'm gonna fill up any chance I can. And um, hopefully, uh, I'll be back with my regular old What It's Like in Houston uh, podcast sometime soon. I can put that one together for you, too. But thanks for being here with me, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you later. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. Your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. Do it! Do it! You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take the shot. There will always be things in the way you dream. Don't let your dreams be dreams. You go out and you find why not. You surround yourself with why not. Live a why not life, man. There are a million no's, but all you need is
is one yes. Where we are today is where we are. Today's the starting day. I know what we're gonna do today. Just do it! Do it! And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. That's all it takes to be successful is an attitude. It's an awesome feeling when you truly believe that you're going to be successful. Nothing is impossible. Dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bye-bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye. Bye.